This is the second video in a series on biodiversity. So we left off looking at ecosystem level diversity and how the biodiversity even just contained within California, because we have the variety of ecosystems that we do, we tend to be a biodiversity hotspot, having a very large number of species, high species richness for the amount of area that we have. So now we're going to look at how we measured biodiversity. And the first one we're going to look at is community level. And these are some measurements that we've already covered in our ecology segment. So species richness, the number of species present, and species evenness, how evenly those are distributed in their abundance across that area. Um, these two terms we learned in ecology, and they're both different ways that we can measure biodiversity. So remember that each of these two communities shown here has the same species richness, same number of species, but they have completely different species evenness, with community one tending to have a higher species evenness, completely even, where community two has this dominant tree species and then a few rare species. And neither of these conditions is necessarily good or bad, um, but in a community where we have low species evenness, those rare species are more vulnerable to um, the drivers of extinction. Ooh, and I should also mention that species richness is really the only um, consistently reported biodiversity statistic for most regions. Um, so that tends to be the uh, metric that we use, but it doesn't tell us everything, right? So keep this in mind as we look at um, kind of biodiversity measurements that usually we're just getting that species richness information and sort of missing the rest of it. So here we have um, bird diversity, so the species richness of birds across the globe. Here we have the global diversity of mammals, and this is both land and sea mammals. And you can see as the colors get darker, more saturated, you have um, more species per unit area. This one is amphibians. And here we have our vascular plants. So if we compare all of these, we can start to see this similar trend. And we've looked at this before in this class. That along the equator, we tend to have higher species richness, higher diversity of organisms. And one thing that we've talked about before that I hope you'll remember is why. So. Big question, be thinking to yourself, try to remember, move those cogs in your brain around. We can think about that reason why and look at areas just within our nation um, where we would have high species richness. So looking at fish diversity, that fish diversity really peaks in the southeast. And so think about how that area might be different um, than the rest of the United States. What type of climate do we tend to see in the Southeast? Globally, if we look um, at our climate, in those areas where we have the most species, those tend to be areas that are warm and wet year round. So we have ideal conditions for growth, right? So if you have ideal conditions for plant growth, then we are going to get a bunch of plant species competing with each other. That is going to drive um, selection for different traits um, and we'll have strong pressures on these plants to evolve and adapt um, new kind of competitive advantages and that can select for speciation things to become different from each other um, as we sort of try to fill all these niches that variety in plants can then select for variety in the animal species and the microbial species and we get this vast diversity forming because we have these ideal conditions year-round for growth. 